winning winning blueprint presents in the lab room. What's new? In Welcome. You are in the lab room. I'm your host, Luke. Thank you for joining me. Okay, I'm reloaded here with a new series simply entitled What's New In? And what we'll basically be talking about with this series is what's new in every team's situation around the National Football League. So we'll look at each of the 32 teams, talk about what's new, out with the old, in with the new. We'll talk about things that have changed from this team's franchise and the roster and the coaching staff and the front office. We'll talk about some of everything that's changed with these teams from 2012 to now going into 2013, and so we'll start with the Arizona Cardinals, but this time the format will be a little bit different in terms of how I will determine what comes next, what team comes next. I'll allow you guys to decide who is next and what I like to call my Goldberg slash pickup basketball game format where, simply put, watch the show. Be the first viewer to leave at the bottom in the comment section. And you cannot send me a direct message on this one. It needs to be at the bottom of the video so that everyone can see it. Simply put, I got next or next. That's all you need. Just like you're playing a basketball game and you walk into the gym, hey, I got next. Simply put, next, the name of your team and if you're the first person to do so, guess what? Your team is next up on the docket. And we will do that for every single episode. So the first person to put their team up on the comment section of each video will be the next team up. So, for instance, this is the Arizona Cardinals. If you watch the show, you don't see any comments left at the bottom of the video. That means you would be first. You leave a next comment followed by the name of the team that you want to see up next, and we will go on from there. Then I will do that team, and then on that video, in the comment section, whoever's first on that video, I will do that team next, and so forth and so forth. So that will be the format that we'll use a little bit different here in the lab room on this particular program. I want to switch it up a little bit. A lot of times, there's a method to my madness. This time, there will be no method. I'll allow you guys to decide who is next up in the pecking order. But today we'll start with the Arizona Cardinals and what they have done to change their fortunes or hopefully change their fortunes coming up in the 2013 campaign. Now, before you can get to what's new, you got to figure out, hey, what did we disregard? What did we get rid of? What's old that's no longer there in Arizona? And there was a lot of funk coming out of Arizona last year in a lot of different areas. And so in order to clean things up and to get it smelling nice and fresh in Arizona, you had to get rid of a lot of the funk and a lot of the trash and garbage that was really holding this team back from being a contending football team in 2012. It, you really need to look no further than the quarterback position for the Arizona Cardinals, but a lot of changes. And of course, anytime you get a new coaching staff, anytime you get a new uh, GM, and a lot of new different parts. Even though your GM was an in-house guy in Steve Kahn, he was just given a different title. He was just bumped up a notch. Still, you get a new GM, you get a new coach, you get a new coaching staff, you're going to have wholesale changes. That's what we have in Arizona. So without any further ado, let's get to out with the old. Hey, what should we do with this old stuff? Ah, get rid of it. As I often like to do, Let's go to the big board and take a look at some of the changes made by the Arizona Cardinals from 2012 into 2013 as we delve into their changes, starting with the out with the old category. And look who's back. The handy dandy pointer is in the building. I resurrected him from the ashes. He's now back in rare form. Handy dandy pointer back on the staff and so we go right to the out with the old category and we start with GM at the top with the Arizona Cardinals out as GM is Rod Graves 
And he's a guy that has been with the Cardinals franchise for a while. It was time for a change in Arizona. I didn't necessarily know if these two guys were at fault, necessarily Graves or Ken Wisenhunt. He's no longer the head coach in Arizona. I thought Wisenhunt got a raw deal because of that quarterback situation. I always have felt like unless Ken Wisenhunt was standing on the table, stomping his feet, going to war for these quarterbacks that we'll talk about here in a second, and really pushing off management and telling them, hey, I don't need any quarterbacks. These guys are good enough to win with. Unless he was doing that, then I didn't think he deserved to be fired because this Arizona Cardinals team was atrocious because of injuries. But mainly, forget about the injuries. This team stunk because of the quarterback position. Flat out. And so, no more Rod Graves as your GM. No more head coach, Ken Wisenhunt. Along with the coaching staff, along with that head coach, goes the coaching staff. So, no more defensive coordinator, Ray Horton, who I thought did a bang-up job in Arizona. And he was in contention for the head coaching job in Arizona for a while there. He was one of the front runners for a while in Arizona before losing out to Bruce Arians. So, I thought Ray Horton did a wonderful job as defensive coordinator in Arizona. No more offensive coordinator, Mike Miller, as well. So, those guys are all gone. They're out as they are now old news in Arizona. We look at some of the players now gone in Arizona. Cornerback William Gay, cornerback Greg Toller. Gay was a failed experiment. You went out, you spent free agent money about three seasons ago getting this guy from the Steelers. Hasn't panned out the way you thought he was going to. He's now back in Pittsburgh. You look at Greg Toller. That was a guy I thought you maybe should have held on to. I like Greg Toller a lot. When he's healthy, he's a really good football player. He's now in Indianapolis. No more safety, Adrian Wilson. And that's the big one because we all know what Adrian Wilson has meant to the Arizona Cardinals over the years. He was a stalwart on that defense. He was a fixture in Arizona. That's going to be a big void to fill. No more safety, carry Rhodes. So you look at those first four players, and three out of those four guys were starters a season ago in your secondary. So a lot of changes are going to be made in that secondary for the Arizona Cardinals. Look at outside linebacker Quentin Groves. Didn't start, but was a guy that was a situational pass rusher for you. Now he's in Cleveland. You look at Paris Lennon. He's another guy that was highly productive for you. Over 100 tackles, getting up there in age. You went out and made an acquisition in free agency, which made him expendable. Paris Lennon no longer on your football team. You look at the quarterback position. And honestly, if I were the National Football League, I'd make all three of these quarterbacks. Any quarterback that was on the Arizona Cardinals roster a season ago should be made to have to sit out a year. Mandatory. Because they were so bad. They were abysmal. Brian Hoyer, he's now in Cleveland. And so he's gone. Another quarterback from a season ago, Kevin Cobb. Thank goodness if you're an Arizona Cardinals fan, that was a lot of wasted money, a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted resources on one Mr. Kevin Cobb. He's now in Buffalo. You look at another quarterback, John Skelton. You thought maybe, just maybe this guy could get it done. He had won a lot of games for you. He came into the season last year, something like a 7-1, 7-2 starting record, 5-0 and at home, where he started out in week one last year. He was a disaster as well. The only quarterback I've ever seen in my life be benched with a lead. <laughs> Never seen that done before. John Skelton now in Cincinnati. All three of those quarterbacks from the roster a season ago, gone. Good riddance if you're an Arizona Cardinals fan. Offensive tackle, the Anthony Bautiste, I thought was a solid piece at the offensive line position. But at tackle, you can do much better. He's no longer on your roster. Adam Snyder, guard, a guy that you gave a $21 million or 17 or something along those lines. You gave him a pretty lucrative deal. Just a season ago, you got him from the 49ers. You thought this guy was going to help elevate your offensive line. Very disappointed. And this guy moved around for you in 2012. I mean, he played everywhere on the offensive line. And management just said, hey, we're going to cut our losses here. He's gone after one year into that deal. So that was a surprise cut for me. You look at running back LaRod Stevens howling. That's going to hurt your backfield. Because he was the only back that possessed what I like to call 
speed. You don't have any of those guys on your roster currently. And so that's going to hurt. He's now in Pittsburgh. Beanie Wells couldn't stay healthy. It's as simple as that. He was not the guy you wanted him to be because he couldn't stay healthy. He's a free agent. And wide receiver, early set, which really hammers home my point that you don't want to draft receivers from LSU if you don't have to. Stay away from LSU at the receiver position. It's not the place to shot for receivers. It's bad luck. So early set out in Arizona. So now we switch over and switch gears to in with the new. We got out with the old. Now let's go in with the new in Arizona. Hey, where'd you get this from? Oh, yeah, that's brand new. And so you got to start at the top. Just like we started at the top when we were going out with the old. You go in with the new and GM Steve Kime is your new man at the top of the food chain. And again, I've already spoke about him being a guy that was already inside the front office in Arizona. He was just bumped up a notch. And so he has intimate knowledge of what's going on on this Arizona Cardinals football team. So not a lot of shaking and moving there. That's a solid move for the Cardinals. Look at the head coach, Bruce Arians. Love the move, love the hire. Again, I wasn't a fan of Ken Wisenhunt being fired, but I do love the hire of Bruce Arians. He's going to take this offense to new heights. And much like Ken Wisenhunt, he's a disciple of that Pittsburgh Steelers offensive tree. He was under Wisenhunt in Pittsburgh as a receivers coach when Wisenhunt was the offensive coordinator. He took over for Wisenhunt once he departed and got this Arizona job. So you're getting a guy that was once a Steelers offensive coordinator for the second consecutive time. You've got a head coach that comes from the Steelers as an offensive coordinator. But Arians last year spent, as you know, his time in Indianapolis was basically the head coach of a team who lost their head coach for a chunk of the season with leukemia. And so he's going to do a great job and he's going to change this offense. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So now you got a new defensive coordinator in, Todd Bowles. We'll talk about the changes that you might see made there. Offensive coordinator, Harold Goodwin. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So those are your new cast of characters running the show in Arizona. Now let's look at some of the moves you made in the offseason to acquire new talent. Who are the new players? In with the new. Cornerback Anton Quezon from the San Diego Chargers. You got rid of two corners. You got to replenish that stock. Arizona Cardinals could use a infusion of talent at the cornerback position in the secondary period. And so you look at Gerard Powers from the Indianapolis Colts. He's coming over with Arians. So here's another guy that can help you in the secondary. Cornerback Javier Arenas, you acquired him from the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a guy that can help you in the secondary as well. Here's your safety replacement for Adrian Wilson. Jeremiah Bell, veteran safety a very good tackling safety. Not going to make a lot of plays in the passing game. That wasn't Adrian Wilson's strength. He was a guy that was always around the line of scrimmage. That's Jeremiah Bell's game now. He's up there in age. And so look for him to be that veteran presence in that secondary. Much like Adrian Wilson was for you for so many years. Look at linebacker Lorenzo Alexander. Your special teams unit just got better by the acquisition of Lorenzo Alexander in free agency. He's the best player in the league at special teams. You're going to love Lorenzo Alexander and the energy he brings to your special teams unit. You look at Jasper Brinkley, one of your big offseason acquisitions in the interior of your defense at the linebacker position. The reason why Paris Lennon became expendable because you got a guy like Jasper Brinkley over from the Minnesota Vikings. He's a clone of Paris Lennon, just about 10 years younger. And so here's a guy that's going to come in, fill up the middle, make tackles, be where he's supposed to be, when he's supposed to be there. Great move by the Cardinals. Also, you welcome back an old character. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Carlos Dansby to your mix in Arizona at the linebacker position. He's coming over from the Miami Dolphins. You look at a couple of defensive ends you picked up. Frosty Rucker from the Cincinnati Bengals. He's underachieved. He was a guy that was drafted relatively high by the Bengals. Really hasn't panned out. Let's see if he can get his career on track in Arizona. Matt Shaughnessy was a guy that played really well in Oakland. 
And he led them in sacks a season ago with four. So you're getting a guy that can get to the quarterback, solid in the run game, solid pickup by the Arizona Cardinals. You look at the offensive side of the ball, those were all defensive players that are now Arizona Cardinals who weren't here a season ago. Let's look at offensive players who are going to make a difference for this team in 2013. You start with the quarterback position. It was abysmal. It was a train wreck. It was part of the reason you lost nine consecutive games a season ago. Well, you get Carson Palmer in a trade with the Raiders, and that's exactly what you need. If you're an Arizona Cardinals fan, you're hoping lightning in a bottle striking twice for your football team. You're getting an aging veteran quarterback, much like you did with Kurt Warner late in his career. You're hoping you can revitalize his career and have him lead you to the promised land like Kurt Warner did for you. Once upon a time, Carson Palmer coming in, and he had a solid season last year in Oakland. You're hoping it can be much of the same, if not better, in Arizona in 2013. Behind him, you acquire Drew Stanton. He's a guy that Arians is comfortable with from Indianapolis, and so he's going to be backing up Carson Palmer in Arizona. You look at running back Rashad Mendenhall, and this goes back to the Pittsburgh days. Again, the NFL, you will find that guys travel with their players and coaching staff and this is one of those moves, hey, I know this guy, I'm comfortable with him. Bruce Arians knows Rashard Mendenhall from his days in Pittsburgh. He signs him up on a one-year deal. We'll see what Rashard Mendenhall can bring to the table. Won't be surprised if he's the starting back in Arizona. You look at another guy you've gotten on the offensive side of football, guard Chilo Rachel. And here's a guy you got in free agency from the Bears. You're looking for him to come in. And just be a backup. I don't think you want to start Chilo Rachel, but he's a solid guy to help you in a pinch, can come in and play some solid guard for you. And so that's the list of players that you've acquired via free agency or trade. Now let's look at players that you have acquired more in with the new in the draft and in undrafted free agents. So we start with the guys who are going to make the roster and have a more realistic shot in making the roster. And those are your draft choices. You look at Jonathan Cooper, we know this guy is a plug-and-play prospect day one. He's going to be your starting guard. Kevin Minter, with the suspension to Daryl Washington, I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Minter started the season at inside linebacker. We'll see. You got a lot of veterans that you went out and signed in free agency. So I'll pump the brakes on that, but I would not be surprised to see Kevin Minter out there early on in the regular season. You look at Teron Matthew, and he's going to play safety. He's very diminutive at 5'9", about a buck 85 soaking wet. So surprised to see this guy being switched over to the safety position, but he's a playmaker, and you want to find ways to get this man on the field. And so look for this guy to be at the safety position. I'm not going to give you in-depth breakdowns of these guys. If you're looking for that, I'll send you to the draft wrap-up series that I've done on every team in the National Football League, including the Arizona Cardinals. So if you're looking for an extensive breakdown of these players, then go seek out the NFL draft wrap-up for that. Defensive end, Alex Okafor. Guard, Earl Watford. Stephon Taylor running back out of Stanford. Wide receiver, Ryan Swope, who you're a little worried about because he's had concussion issues. That's the reason why he was around in the sixth round. And he's not ready. And so that's the guy you got to keep your eye on there. Running back Andre Ellington out of Clemson and tight end D.C. Jefferson out of Temple. You look at all your undrafted free agents right here, and there's quite a few of them. If you look, there's 16 in all. And, of course, these guys are long shots to make this roster, but let's run down the list anyway. Wide receiver Jerron Brown out of Clemson. Wide receiver Dan Buckner out of Arizona. Offensive tackle Joe Capriglo out of Colorado State. Safety Javon Harris out of Oklahoma. Linebacker Kenny Demons out of Michigan. Linebacker Dan Giordano out of Cincinnati. Cornerback Josh Hill out of Cal. Safety Tony Jefferson out of Oklahoma. Offensive tackle Jamal Johnson Webb out of Alabama A&M. Linebacker Corey Jones out of Wyoming. Wide receiver Javon Lawson out of Louisiana Lafayette. Wide receiver Michael Rios out of Marist. Defensive tackle Patrick Scott out of Florida A&M. Wide receiver Taylor Shaw out of Northwestern 
Missouri State. Cornerback Prentice Wagner out of Tennessee. And cornerback Ronnie Yell out of San Jose State to round out the group. One, two, maybe three of these guys is going to probably make your roster, especially with the new coaching staff. There are some talented guys in here that stick out at me. I see Tony Jefferson, safety out of Oklahoma. He's a guy that's very talented, very inconsistent, but he's a guy that I could easily see making this roster. You look at Jerron Brown, receiver out of Clemson. That's a guy that could make this roster. If you notice, out of these 16 players, there's one, two, three, four, five receivers, the most out of any position on this list. And so, you know, Bruce Arians loves his receivers. And so we'll talk about that here in a second as we switch gears now from in with the new to philosophical changes for the Arizona Cardinals. Hey, you got so many new parts. Anything change around here? So simply put, philosophical changes basically talks about what you're going to see differently on the field for the Arizona Cardinals in the 2013 season. You look at this team, and Ken Wisenhunt came from Pittsburgh with a pension for the trick play. You, you saw end arounds and double reverses and all kinds of weird and wacky things for him. His biggest play was the throwback pass from Randall L. to Heinz Ward in Super Bowl XL against the Seattle Seahawks, one of the signature plays from that Super Bowl. And so you're not going to see a lot of that with Bruce Arians, even though they came from the same tree. And again, I've talked about that uh, just a tad here in this segment. But Arians coming from that Pittsburgh tree with your ex-head coach, Ken Wisenhunt, there are a lot of similarities, but there are a lot of differences, many that you will notice. Let's start with your base sets on offense. Bruce Arians is a guy that doesn't use a fullback. So a guy like Anthony Sherman, gone. He's no longer on your roster. There's not a place for a guy like that on an Arizona Cardinals roster now that Bruce Arians is your head coach because he doesn't employ a fullback. He does not use fullbacks. That's going to be the first change you see. So on game days, your starting lineup could easily consist of three receivers to start out the game or what Bruce Arians employed a lot of in Indianapolis, two receivers, two tight end sets with one running back. And the Colts, for the majority of the season, started in a two tight end, two receiver look. And that's going to be a change for you versus the two receivers, two backs, one tight end look that you're accustomed to, you're going to see a lot of two tight end, two receiver sets to start out the game. And you'll notice that right now on your roster, you probably have about six or seven tight ends because Bruce Arians loves his tight ends. He uses the tight ends much like an H back, much like a fullback. That's the guy that's going to be doing a lot of the lead blocking on a lot of these plays. There will be no fullback. So that's a philosophical change there. Something else to look out for, your passing game is going to change. It's going to be a lot of down-the-field passing. If you saw Andrew Luck last year, he put it in the air over 40 times, probably 12 out of the 16 regular season games. And so there's going to be many a games where Carson Palmer just lets it rip. And you're going to see a lot of vertical passing plays where the ball is being thrown 15 yards down the field or more. And so... It's a very precise offense. There's going to be a lot of moving around. And I'm hearing that Larry Fitzgerald will be used much like Reggie Wayne was last year, where you don't know where this guy's going to line up. He can be in a slot. He can be out wide at the X. He can be out wide at the Y position. And so Larry Fitzgerald is going to be everywhere, which is a change from a guy that is normally outside, out wide at the receiver positions, at the X, at the Y. He's going to be at the X, at the Y, at the Z. If they go in a four receiver look or three receivers, one tight end that split out, we know Rob Hausler, your very athletic tight end, can split out wide as well. He could be anywhere. You don't know where this guy's going to line up, and that's a good thing if you're an Arizona Cardinals fan. So that's one of the changes you'll see on offense as well. So look for this offense to be a lot more dynamic, but expect to run the football a lot more productively in 
a Bruce Arians run scheme. You're going to throw it a heck of a lot, but you will run the football as well. That's why he has so many tight ends on his roster. So expect the running game to kind of resurface in Arizona in 2013. Let's switch to the defensive side of football now. And you look at your defensive coordinator now, Todd Bowles. He's a guy that is more likely to make his defense fit to the parts that he has. Unlike your coaching staff a year ago, offensively and defensively, Mike Miller, your offensive coordinator, and your defensive coordinator, Ray Horton, you're going to use your players in a position that benefits the team as a whole more so than trying to impose a scheme onto players. Todd Bowles is a guy that's very versatile. He's coached a 3-4 defense in Miami. He's coached a 4-3 defense in Philadelphia last year. So he's well-versed in both. The personnel in Arizona fits a 3-4 scheme, so he's going to leave it as such. But you're going to see multiple fronts. You're going to see some 4-3. You're going to see some 3-4. You're going to see some 4-6. You're going to see some nickels, some dime. That's what teams around the league do. So you're not necessarily going to see just one specific package, but your base defense will be a 3-4 defensive look. And I think guys are going to flourish under this defensive scheme where they're going to be allowed to use their strengths more so than, hey, you have to attack this gap because my defense commands you to attack this gap. They're going to allow guys to run out and do things that are strengths of theirs and under this defensive scheme, you'll see a lot of guys come back to the forefront like a Darnell Dockett, who was really silenced last year in Ray Horton's defense. I think he's going to be allowed to roam around and do some things and be a little bit more aggressive and less of a sacrificial lamb up front to allow the linebackers to roam free. He'll be allowed to do his thing up front and still help those linebackers be unscathed back there in the back half of that defense. So I'll be looking for a lot of big things out of your Arizona Cardinals defense under Todd Bowles. You look at your new offensive coordinator in Harold Goodwin, and here's a guy that simply came over from Indianapolis with your head coach, Bruce Arians. He was the offensive line coach in Indy. He's getting a shot at being the offensive coordinator. And so he's going to employ a lot of what the Colts ran last season which is what Arians essentially is doing. He's going to be an extension, essentially, of what Bruce Arian wants to have happen in Arizona. So, again, expect the passing game to be dynamic in Arizona. But the running game will be back in Arizona. That's why your first pick was a guy like Jonathan Cooper. That's why you drafted another guy like Earl Watford, someone that's a mauler in the run game. You expect these guys to pay dividends for you. And I look for the Cardinals to resurrect their run game with these new philosophical changes in 2013. And so there you have it. That is the Arizona Cardinals. And that's what's new in Arizona in 2013. What's new in Arizona?